Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a church here in our region hosts a giveaway to help feed Eastern Kentucky families and a local business celebrates a special anniversary after facing a variety of hardships. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning to you. It's Monday and it's 531. I'm Dakota Makris. Good morning to you. And let's take a quick look of our forecast with Brandon Robinson, who's back with us after a four day hiatus. Brandon, good morning to you. And weather's calm right now, so that's a good thing. Exactly. Now is the is the yeah. key word there to remember, <laughs> yeah. but I do think we're going to be OK for the most part this week. Seen some graphics floating around social media of a monster snowstorm. As of what I saw this morning, not looking like the case, but there is a but there. We still have the potential for a winter storm as we head deeper into the week. Let's take a look, see what's going on this morning. Quiet as we get ready to wrap up January here. Buffalo Mountain at 27 up there, but a mix of uh, clouds and a little bit of clear sky this morning. It's 19 in Monticello, 29 in Pikeville, everybody else in between there in the low to mid to upper 20s. Breakfast forecast for you this morning. Get your bowls out. It's time for some frosted weather weights and about 23 by 7 o'clock. But we jump quickly as the sunshine peaks through the clouds. Sunshine will be out full blast as we head deeper into the day. Sunrise 738, sunset 556. We're almost back to 6 o'clock for sunset now. And you'll see again mostly sunny skies once we get into the afternoon hours. An average temperature is right around 45. Dakota. All right, Brandon, thank you. Well, Deputy Clyde Trent of the Knox County Sheriff's Department was laid to rest on Sunday. Now, Trent had been with the department since 2015, but was in law enforcement for more than 20 years. Before that, he spent 25 years as an aircraft welder, even working on Air Force One. He was a recording music artist and a singer. He was buried Sunday evening at Hopper Funeral Home in Barberville. Well, the funeral for late London police officer Travis Hurley is today. Now, Hurley was a re retired lieutenant and former canine handler. Funeral services will be held at 1 p.m. at First Baptist in East Bernstadt, and funeral will follow a burial will follow at Mount Zion Cemetery. Prestonsburg police are asking for the public's help finding 31 year old Jesse Carr of Elizabethtown. He was in the Floyd County Jail on drug trafficking and escape charges and was seeking treatment at ARH. When his restraints had to be removed, he left his room and eventually the hospital. The deputy jailer tried to go after him but was unsuccessful. Police stress at no time was the public in danger. If you see him, do not approach him. Instead, call 911. He's believed to be in the Louisville area or Elizabethtown. A KSB trooper with Post 9 in Pikeville received the Life Saving Award during the 2021 Sworn Awards, an annual awards show put on by the KSP. Trooper Colbert Maynard uh, had responded to a medical emergency in Pikeville. He discovered a woman was choking in her recliner. The trooper was able to remove the obstruction and save the woman's life. He then brought her an electric fan and waited by her side until EMS arrived. Well, the Wolf County Search and Rescue Team has, fin has finally gotten the keys to a shiny new toy. The team won the new Land Rover Defender and spent the weekend training in Asheville with the Land Rover. Chief John May says the Red River Gorge sees visitors year round now. And earlier this month, the team rescued a 25 year old woman. Now their team has been using an old box truck to maneuver the trails. Now the chief hopes the new luxury off-roader will help them save lives and get over terrain they couldn't in the past. Well, pet owners across eastern Kentucky are turning to Facebook and other social media sites to report their pets as missing. But what could these but what could be causing these disappearances? Veterinarians at the Appalachian Animal Hospital say although there are several reasons, coyotes well could be one of them with our increased coyote population here in the mountains. They say smaller dogs and cats can easily become prey. You know, I suspect that, that that may play into some of the disappearances on these smaller animals. Um, even on bigger ones, sometimes they will lure them away. And what they tend to do is they'll say that one coyote will come out and lure them off, but there's a pack waiting for them when they get there. Well, doctors say it's important to keep smaller animals on a leash when you take them outside. And if they are not leash trained to supervise them carefully. Well, as a pet owner, it's important to stay up to date on your animal's vaccinations, but veterinarians want to remind dog owners to keep their pet vaccinated against one virus in particular. 
Parvo is a contagious virus that affects dogs' intestinal tract. The virus primarily affects younger dogs, but can be seen in older ones as well. Veterinarians say dog owners should be mindful of which Parvo vaccine they give to their dog and how they choose to administer it. They need to, to seek out a good, reliable vaccine that I would recommend, you know, going to, to a vet for that because most of the dogs that we see come in that have been with Parvo, have, the owners have given vaccines over the counter. So either those are not working or they're not kept properly chilled or they're not giving them on the right dosage schedule. Well, doctors add that they see dogs come in to the office with Parvo year round and that this virus is an ongoing issue. Well, a food box giveaway was held during the weekend by a church in Whitesburg. Forgiven Ministries gave away 42 boxes to families in Letcher County on Saturday. Pastor Aaron Prophet says it is all about spreading the word of God and is important to help low-income families in the area. We see a lot of the elderly crowd that, that comes in uh, and it, it's important for them. They, they need the extra help. And it's also important to us as a church just to be able to help people and get the word of God out. That's, that's our main focus, our main goal. Well, he says any amount not donated is stored away for emergency situations. The next giveaway will be February 26th at 10 a.m. Well, starting and operating a small business will, of course, can be stressful, but adding a pandemic to the mix can pose entirely different sets of obstacles. Arlissa Williams sat down with the owner of the Red Spot Newt here in Hazard as she celebrates the bookstore's second anniversary. The Red Spotted New in Hazard opened its doors January 30th of 2020, offering a new and exciting small business for community members to enjoy. A very successful opening. We opened on Main Street and the building was, was tiny, but it was a, a space that allowed me to kind of gauge the, the interest of the community. But only days after the grand opening, something happened that the business's owner, Mandy Scheffel, could not have anticipated. The store flooded. Um, two feet of water, we had to empty the entire store, and that was a, a, it was disheartening for me after I had put that much work into it, but there was never a moment where I thought, okay, I'm going to give up on this. With the support and encouragement of her community, Mandy was able to get the business up and running again, but only a few months later, the COVID-19 pandemic began. Again, the community support was there, I was selling books out of the front door. People would just place an order online, drive up through the front door like a drive through It was a drive through bookstore for two months. Later that year, the business would relocate from Main Street to Memorial Drive. Scheffel says these obstacles and changes helped her learn how to roll with the punches. I've, I've taken a lot of blows in the two years that I've been open and still been able to survive and grow showing other small business owners that they too can overcome whatever stands in their way. In Hazard, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Well, Shuffle adds that in the future, she would love to create an event space for the bookstore, host book clubs, and even implement a weekly children's story hour. Well, despite not taking the win in the all age championship, community leaders in Breathitt County reflect on the team's impressive run. First time in their history, the Breathitt County Bobcats were finally able to compete in the tournament. While their competition in Pikeville took the win, Judge Executive Jeff Noble says that is not is what important. I've been part of coaching for 17 years in high school and 13 years in ponytail league. And when you see kids play together as a team and, and be successful, there's nothing no more rewarding. Well, he says despite not going all the way, the, he is still proud of the effort the team showed. Well, just ahead this morning, a legendary football star might be hanging up his helmet for the last time. Oh, we'll have those details on the way next. The Bengals are heading to their first Super Bowl in more than 30 years, and the forecast later this week could be a wild ride. Both of those things are true. I'll have the latest on the forecast on the weather side here in about three minutes.